So the dust has settled, emotions have calmed down a little bit, so that means it's time to take a level-headed approach to the recent Halo Infinite news. And we're going to be answering the question if Halo Infinite should be delayed. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So I feel like we're still kind of in the shockwave of the announcements that happened on the Friday development update of Halo Infinite. And within my information video that I did post up on Friday, I gave my, a little bit of my reactions to the news as well, but I've actually had some time to take it in, see what the community thinks about it, taking their opinions as well. And so in this video, I want to answer the question, is it worth delaying Halo Infinite once again? We might get some more reasons and a better explanation of why this delay is happening in the new development update that's coming out this Thursday. Make sure to catch the channel when that post does go live. I'll be making a video about it as soon as possible. This video is a bit more of an opinion piece with facts. So if you guys like these discussion type of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite this year. Make sure to tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So if we're going to delay Halo Infinite, the first question we have to ask, what is necessary for a Halo launch to be successful? The two big things are a well done campaign and a well done multiplayer as well. And the reason why the game was delayed back in 2020 was because we could visibly see that the foundations of Halo Infinite, at least graphically, we're not there. With the amount of pop-in textures, the like smooth texturing, the geometry of pop-ins and things like that, the draw distance was terrible. We saw those pop-in clouds during the reveal of the game trying to showcase this amazing expansive environment with like pop-in textures happening with their best showing possible. That's really concerning. So literally like the foundation of having like a good immersive experience in the campaign was not there in 2020. That's why the game was delayed until 2021. And we saw with the most recent 2021 reveal of the campaign, at least that one little overview of the expansive area of the campaign, there was no pop in textures, the quality and the lighting looked fantastic as well. The frame rate looked rather steady as well. And though yes, it was probably more of a cutscene of anything, kind of maybe pulling some trickery here or there to try to showcase what they want to accomplish. But 343 put their best foot forward during the E3 reveal and it looked great. So the reasons why delaying the game in 2020 seemed to be resolved for 2021. So that foundation having a well done immersive campaign seems to be there in 2021. And now we've had a chance to actually play the multiplayer side of things at least a little bit, a little snack size of it against the bots. We saw the customization options. We saw the battle pass examples. We had a chance to play the game and everyone seemed to be universally very happy in the place of the gameplay of where Halo Infinite is at right now. Obviously we played against bots. Things may be a little different with the next flight when we're playing against PvP, but we'll have to wait and see. But it seems like all the stones are lined up in a row, if that's the proper saying there, but it seems like the multiplayer is going to be pretty fun. Like the base foundation of what makes a good Halo multiplayer seems to be there for Halo Infinite. Now, of course, for a release of a Halo game, that's like the bare minimum, having a good campaign, having a good multiplayer. Everything else beyond that is like secondary, tertiary kind of stuff. Things like Theater and Forge, though, are very important for Halo, don't necessarily have to be there to make a good Halo game. Those items are what make a great Halo game. And trust me, I want Halo Infinite to be a great Halo game as well, but is Forge honestly necessary for a release of a Halo Infinite? Yeah, probably not. Is co-op really that necessary for a good Halo Infinite campaign experience? I mean, it helps, but it's not really necessary, I think, to the game itself. Now we can have a quick look at the campaign about like co-op and stuff like that and showcasing within the Master Chief Collection, how often is co-op actually played? And it's surprisingly small, actually. Uh, there's one achievement, which is complete any co-op level on heroic difficulty on Brover Shield and only 16.5% of players have completed a co-op campaign mission on Heroic Difficulty. And this is on the Master Chief Collection, which I know like there's campaign challenges that need to be done for that game. And still a lot of people haven't completed that. So even though it feels super important to be there, guys, it might not be as important as it actually feels. Though the community seems to be kind of split depending who you ask if Halo Infinite should be delayed. So for example, I ran a community poll here on my YouTube channel. If you want to take part of these community polls or posts where I do ask you quite, guys questions quite often, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But down below here, I asked the question, should Halo Infinite be delayed till fall of 2022? And out of 12k votes, 
73% of you said no. So Mint Blitz asked a similar question and showcased out of 88,000 votes, 69%, I know giggity, said yes to delay the game. But this question was, should Halo Infinite be delayed until Forge and Co-op are ready? Fellow content creator on here, Arash, with 40,000 votes on his poll, said 72% said yes, they should delay it, but just saying that should it be delayed, but when? is a big question here. Though when you ask different communities, Ubernix poll here with 13,000 plus votes say 56% saying it's not worth delaying again for Forge and co-op. IGN reporter Dustin with you know 18,000 votes, they said no, not worth a delay. So I think it kind of comes down to who you ask and what kind of communities you've built up over the years. I feel like maybe like the more classic Halo fans would probably be much more apt to saying to delay the game, while other communities might be more just okay with releasing the game as is. But like I was saying throughout those posts, I think a big question is, is how long should it be delayed to? We have a six month delay for Forge, and that's just like the window right now, which would put us in probably like a springtime release, which Halo is not really much of a spring or summertime release kind of game. It's much more of a fall blockbuster kind of thing. So now we got to answer the question, do you think it's worth delaying the game until fall of 2022 to play Halo Infinite because there is no Forge and no co-op? Plus, we don't even know what other features are not going to be there at launch or what features are going to be there at launch. We still don't know. In my opinion, I say it's not worth delaying. Again, I think full steam ahead for a 2021 release because we've already had our one year delay. I can't I just can't sit through another year of delays of just looking up toy reveals and things like that. Like. At some point, the game has to release. And yes, it really does hurt not having co-op, not having Forge there at release. I was expecting those features to be there, and it really does suck. I don't like that. Nobody likes the fact that those features are not going to be there at launch. But is it worth delaying the game a whole nother year so then people can create things in Forge and you can experience co-op campaign together? I say no. I want to play Halo Infinite. From what we've played from the tech preview, it was fun. Give me more multiplayer. The campaign looks to be a wholly new experience experience that we've never had before in a Halo game. Probably why the campaign co-op has been delayed because it's such a different experience that we've never had for a Halo game. And working on a brand new engine and having to be on so many more platforms because this is the most accessible Halo game we've ever had, I can understand why 343 is probably having some issues where they need to make sure that co-op campaign is uniformly functioning the same on any other platform people are playing on. Be it PC, the series consoles, the last gen Xbox One consoles, probably even xCloud as well. And Joseph Satan brought this up as well as that, even though yes, I hate to say this, but it's a live service game. There are going to be new features, new content continually added to this game throughout the seasons. And while having a really good launch is incredibly important for Halo because the last few launches have not really been that great, especially for Halo 5. I don't want to be deprived of an awesome campaign experience and a really fun multiplayer experience because of these secondary features like co-op and Forge are holding the entire game back. But this Halo launch is going to be something completely different that we've ever experienced for a Halo game. Like I said, launch is really just the beginning of Halo Infinite. There will be campaign content that will be brand new to the game that you can spend co-op with just so that you have to wait for the first three months of the launch. There will be new Forge content, there will be new maps to Forge on as well. There will be new things to do continually throughout Halo Infinite. It's going to be a living, breathing beast. It's not going to be like what we had previously where we had with like Halo 5 where they basically cut content from the release of the game and were trickled it in throughout like a year and a half or so. It only had like two years of support and it was completely left alone. And guys, we've had six years between Halo games. This game of Halo Infinite has been really more in development for about three-ish, maybe four years. Because 343 stated that they were just going to move forward with Halo 6. They were started working on that right after the release of Halo 5, took community feedback. They decided to just kind of go back to the drawing board and rebuild a new Halo game, being Halo Infinite. But yeah, six years between Halo games is far too long. I just want to play this game, guys. I know it's not ideal. I don't like not having co campaign co-op. I do not like not having Forge there at launch but I don't feel like these features are worth holding the entire game back for us to experience it this fall. And honestly, I feel like after a year of the release when the game is finally put together in a way, I guess you can want to think about it, even though it'll be more like six months, we'll kind of forget about it and then move forward. We've even seen this within the Halo community itself. I saw a comment on my most recent video talking about, wow, MCC is really like doing a great job of like delivering the fans of what they want and things like that. But you kind of forget that back in 2019, they only launched with Halo Reach. The PC port was okay, but not that great. 
didn't have Forge at launch either, but I'm seeing comments in my videos of people kind of forgetting that the mediocre launch of PC Halo MCC has kind of faded away by this point, and now like MCC right now is a fantastic product. And I kind of have a feeling we're gonna have that same experience again, but with Halo Infinite, where the launch of the game, it's gonna be good enough. Is it gonna have everything? Is it gonna have everything that people wanted in a Halo game? That's just not gonna happen because there's so many sub-communities within the Halo franchise that it would just wouldn't be possible to develop a game game for every single person. There's going to be some part of the game that you really like that might not be there at launch. It might come in later. It might never come at all. But it is very important to have your voice heard. So it's important to like make sure you voice your thing, your opinions on Twitter, voice your opinions on Halo Waypoint and things like that. So people get to understand where the community is coming from. So ultimately, should Halo Infinite be delayed again? I say no. Does it suck that co-op and Forge will not will not be there at launch? Absolutely. But I'm not willing to let those features that I feel are more secondary kind of features hold us back from the primary experience of campaign and multiplayer. And I'm not doing damage control because I'm a Halo shield or anything. It's just because that's how I genuinely feel about this game. But as the Halo community does have their opinions, make sure you share them in the comment section down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them as well. If you're new to the channel or missed any content from me recently, check out my videos right here. I got played for all my Halo news videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.